Hey gearheads and welcome to Garage Talk. I'm Corey and this massive beast is the 2022 GMC Sierra 2500 HD Texas edition with the 6.6 liter Duramax diesel under the hood. In this video, I'm gonna give you a run around of the outside, the inside, what powers it, and hit the road to see what it's like to live with here in East Texas. All right, starting with what powers this ginormous truck. That would be GM's 6.6 .6 liter Duramax V8 under the hood, making 445 horsepower and 910 pound-feet of torque. No, it does not win any awards for having the most torque in its class, but as we will talk about in just a moment, it is quite a powerful beast when it comes to towing and hauling and payload and all of that good stuff. It is big, it is massive, and when you close this large hood, which is a little bit of a reach, you can truly just step back and take in the sheer presence of this big truck. You do have a functional ram air uh, intake up here at the front, and then this massive chrome grille of this SLT Texas Edition really makes a statement in your rear view mirror if you come up on somebody in this. We've got a lot of chrome up here. We also have a lot of lights. We've got LED lights here, LED headlights, LED turn signals, LED fog lights, and because this thing is over 80 inches wide, LED marker lights up on the roof, as well as turn signals in these trailer mirrors, as well as floodlights, uh, LED floodlights here for better visibility. This thing is big. This thing is massive, and it definitely makes a statement out on the road. And they may not be red, but this truck still comes with tow hooks. Kudos, GMC. All right, so we talked about power up front and how powerful this 6.6 .6 liter diesel is. Right here inside the driver's door, we have the handy dandy trailering information on this trailering sticker. And you can see that uh, your curb weight on this is 8,000 pounds. So even as big as this beast is, it's not as heavy as say the upcoming GMC Hummer EV. Just something to note. Max payload, 3,266 pounds, as this exact one sits. Conventional, conventional trailer, 18,500. So again, not as powerful or as competent as some of the offerings from Ram with their Cummins, but still quite powerful. Tongue weight, 1850. Gooseneck, another 18,500. And max tongue weight, 2,775. A very strong and very powerful entry from General Motors. One interesting nugget I want to point out on this diesel is GM's placement for the uh, engine block heater controls. So instead of having a cord or cable hanging out that massive chrome grill, you actually have a side access port built in here to the driver's side front bumper. Nice. All right, we are going to work our way from nose to tail on the outside of this big truck and it is big. You can see I'm 5'10". I could put my elbow on the hood of this truck. It's large. One thing I will call out here, this is an SLT model. It is the Texas edition, and this is where GMC chooses to display that information. It's actually got some filigree here that is a really nice little Western detail. And then the words Texas edition and Duramax 6.6 .6 liter are actually embossed on it. So it gives it a little bit of texture. This is not a real fender vent or anything of that nature. I mentioned the camper mirrors a little bit earlier. So you see you've got your turn signal, turn signal here. You've got LED flood lamps for the front to give extra visibility. They are power extending. There was a little bit of controversy when uh, General Motors went to this single post style on the 1500s that they were wondering how the trailer mirrors would work because they are typically dual post, but you can see this application of them makes it work very well. In addition to the camera sticking out under the GMC and the grill, you also have a camera up 
underneath the rear view mirror that helps with that 360 view that we'll talk about as we get inside. These mirrors do have dual elements. So you've got a power uh, adjustable top and a manual uh, convex wide view lower section down here. 2500 HD here on the side and then your steps because you need steps to get in and out of this big truck and they are fixed in place. They're very good. Chrome door handles all the way around with uh, GM's push button on all four doors. So proximity key access allows you to get in and out. There's no touch pad on the back of the door. You just push uh, once to unlock, push, push a second time to lock, and that controls your locks. You can do it from any door. So as a family vehicle, if you're loading that kit in first, it's really handy to have that available on all four doors. And then as you get back to the back, if you've got a toolbox back here in the back, this step right here allows you to get in and access that toolbox without having to climb in your bed. Let's move around back to the bed to talk a little bit more about what's going on back there. Okay, so General Motors has long been blasted for not having round wheel arches over a very round tire. And for the new body style, uh, General Motors actually put round arches on the Chevrolets. So you get a very GMC unique uh, trapezoidal cutout here with marker lights above the rear wheels. You do have these very nice machined aluminum uh, 18 inch wheels wrapped in some Michelin tires. Very, very good rugged muscular look. And then you have your six foot bed adorned with your chrome 4x4 logo. No, this isn't a Z71, but it is fairly good off-road. Tailgate wars are in full effect and GMC's multi-pro tailgate is a good one. You have six different positions and I'm going to see if I can get them all. First, you can lower the top portion right here. It's a nice workbench. This 2500 is a little bit high, but uh, very good counter height uh, workstation right here. You can also flip this up while it is in this position and you've got a nice load stop for long cargo that is up above the wheel wells. You can fold that back down, fold this back up, push the lower button here and you get a traditional tailgate, which is damped and very nice. Now you've got a very long traditional tailgate. Again, fold this up. Now you have a load stop for long cargo. Put that back down, hit the top button. And now I can actually get in a little bit further because that top portion of the tailgate is down. Gives me really good access to the actual bed. Lastly, fold that load stop down one more time and flip up the handle right here. Can actually make sure it's in place. And now I've got easy access to the bed. Very nice, all told. Uh, one thing you do want to be careful of and be sure to fold that down before you close everything back up. But very handy tailgate here in the GMC Sierra 2500 HD. All right, more steps on this vehicle. You have this built-in step to the rear bumper that allows you to climb up from the side whether the tailgate is up or down. And these steps are larger than the outgoing model and they also house the blind spot monitoring so that GMC can keep these tail lights lights instead of having a big dull spot right in the middle of them for your blind spot monitoring. It's a very nice system and you get rear uh, parking sensors back here and your cameras and lights both uh, up on the cab and back here. Uh, you also get a trailer cam, which we really can't talk about today because we don't have a trailer. When you do get back here, you've got LED lights on either side of the back, back here uh, by the tailgate, as well as your cargo lamps up here. And there is your additional camera. Power sliding rear view mirror and plenty of space back here. I will note you do have a plug back here that will help you with uh, some 
work out on the job site, but it is not like Ford's Pro Power on board. It is not that robust of a system. Step down on the textured step down here, and you can very easily close it all up. All right, I want to quickly talk about the cabin in this. So nice steps for getting in and out. Very comfortable commanding seating position that allows you to see out very well. The step up means I'm actually taller in this than I would be standing. I'm 5'10", and it's a very commanding view of the road. Two-person memory seat, so depending on who else is driving with you, you don't have to worry about adjusting everything. You do have a manual tilt and telescope steering wheel, which is nice. It is heated, but let's hop back into the back and show you just how much room this full-size pickup has and why I claim that they are the family rig of Texas. So sitting here behind myself, I can cross my legs. I can kind of scoot out and get comfortable. Very nice. And then I can hop out. I've got a center armrest. Fold that up. And then it's 60-40 split. So I can actually fold up the driver's side with the car seat still in the back and get it to that underfloor storage and get into it however I would need to. And then you can fold this down without a lever and there is some hidden seat back storage just for a little bit of extra uh, cubby space, maximum utilization of the space in this rig. All right, hopping up front into the 22 GMC 2500 uh, Sierra HD. Very nice layout in here. This does carry over the uh, same interior from the 21 model. The 1500 22 year models are actually getting an all new interior with a much larger center screen and a different, more horizontal layout, but the heavy duties do carry over the previous design. You do get a smallish eight and a quarter inch or eight inch uh, color infotainment screen. It's got GM's uh, standard infotainment system. I like this home row of buttons that takes you to all your necessary systems really quickly and takes you back home. We were talking outside about the camera system. You do have very comprehensive system. You've got bird's eye 360 that can be turned on and off on any one of these screens, but nice view there. And then you've got the view out of the front camera, which you can actually put the trajectory lines on, show you exactly where your wheels are going to take you. Same thing out the back, and then looking down at the rear bumper with the trajectory, front bumper with the trajectory, a nice little animation for backing up if you wanna see that. And then you can see out of your front, your front tires, so you can see as I, turn the wheel your trajectory lines change here and you can see the tires up front you can see out back you can see actually you see the rear door handles and uh, let me turn off the bird's eye it gives you an even wider field of view there you can do uh, trajectory lines or trailering guides on any of your rear facing so let me see so there's uh, <laughs> there is your rear bumper with your trailering line and with trajectory slide over you can actually see in the six foot bed here you can actually see straight down on your trailer hitch and if we had a trailer hooked up we've got options for extra cameras for the trailers including an invisible trailer so that uses a camera mounted on the back uh, to give you the impression that you have an invisible trailer behind you different trailering profiles that you can build into this and Again, different uh, camera systems for those. Audio controls, phone controls, navigation, and climate, all very easy to use. Uh, I really like GM's infotainment. Climate control, heated, ventilated seats, exhaust brake, parking brake, rear tailgate release. That will actually put that rear tailgate down, but because it is a multi-pro, you can't put it back up. Hazard lights, traction control, power for that bed-mounted, uh, power outlet back there. I, I don't know why I can't think of the words. And then what I like to call the um, the fart button. 
you push this button if someone graces you with a um, blast from their underpants and uh, then yeah that rolls all four windows down simultaneously if you don't want to be quite so crude uh, think hot Texas summers you need to let all the hot air out hit that button and quickly put them all down trailer brake control USB a USB C a uh, power outlet and a wall plug right there Qi wireless charging two cup holders very nice center console here with a very large center console with spots for hanging file folders so you can treat this like your office and rear cup holders back here uh, we've got some power outlets and your air vents on the back of this center console on either side you have little cubbies for more additional storage with some fake wood up above it your engine start stop button here some additional two-tier storage up here dual glove boxes on the passenger side and very clean and easy to read analog gauges with a small digital readout here in the middle you've got all your buttons on this side for your bluetooth and controlling that center helper screen your cruise control on the left then moving over here you've got your four-wheel drive controls they're all push buttons so you've got auto four-wheel drive two high two four high four low and your drive mode selector you've got normal and off-road controls for your lighting led lights your dash brightness a dial for all of your lighting controls outside and then your uh, we'd like to call it the jellyfish launch, launcher but it is that rear lighting in the bed can be turned on and off up here on the driver's door you've got lock and unlock your memory seat setting moving down you've got your mirror controls as well as your mirror extending controls so those trailering mirrors do slide out if you've got a long trailer back behind you they are power and then uh, your window switches you have power up and down for both the front windows and power down or express down but uh, not express up on the rear you've got a standard uh, rear view mirror here with built-in auto dim feature home link controls up here your led lights and then your window slider button for your sliding rear window not a bad interior all told uh, i would like to see if gm decides to upgrade the 2500s to the 1500 interior i do foresee that coming very soon but that's enough talking about it let's actually get out on the road and see how this thing drives all right setting off in the 2022 gmc sierra 2500 hd it's a big truck it's a very big truck and I like it a lot uh, as we roll off the unbeaten path here uh, we will get onto the pavement because I have long held that full-size pickups are the family vehicle of Texas and that does not necessarily stop when you go to 2500 and 3500 heavy-duty pickups uh, we like these here in Texas that's why there is a Texas edition of this vehicle it rides like you would expect a big truck to ride which by today's standards is actually very smooth uh, driving this one around you can definitely tell that there is no payload in the bed if there were some additional weight back there it would actually benefit the ride and handling a little bit more but I'm impressed with how easy this thing is to drive around town. You can see I'm driving one hand right now. Uh, the steering is light for such a big vehicle. The turning radius is actually really good for such a large vehicle. And it does really well heading down the road because putting many, many miles on this is perhaps one of the best uses of this. Pulling a trailer, we mentioned earlier, 18,500 pounds of max towing as this one sits which is very good it is not best in class I believe the Ram gets over 20,000 but <laughs> at some point you're really just splitting hairs trying to compare between all the different models this one does very well and will be more than enough pickup for most if not all buyers 
driving it around town like I said it is a very large truck but the light steering not too light but the lighter steering and the good turning radius and the mirrors the big windows the great visibility out of this make it a very easy vehicle to maneuver and operate I've mentioned before that I drove a 2007 Silverado 1500 and this feels very similar to that even as big as it is and it took me no time at all to really get used to driving this around and well it is by no means a sports car because it's huge over 8,000 pounds it's heavy I find that it's very easy just to whip around and drive like any other vehicle out on the road and oh yeah it can haul 18,000 pounds back behind it too. It is a very good and easy to drive vehicle all the way around and very powerful too. Get out there and go. road noise from vehicles around me yes I hear that I'm driving a big truck down the road but as far as that diesel when I get on it I can hear that it's there but again we've come so far in vehicle dynamics that this this would be a very good daily driver if you had to the Allison transmission in this is paired very nicely with that 6.6 .6 liter Duramax under the hood and makes for very good use of the power. It's never really hunting for gears and very seamlessly shifts you from one to another. And it, I'm, I'm just very impressed with the refinement of this entire vehicle. It's shake, rattle, and shutter free. It doesn't creak like General Motors vehicles of yore. Uh, it's very solidly put together in here. The materials are nice. They're soft touch pretty much everywhere you look. And this unique texture that we talked about earlier gives a nice metallic look to it as well. I just wish they used more of it. It's here on the center stack and here on the steering wheel and I think it's a very nice textured touch uh, for this interior. The gauges are labeled every 20 miles per hour with the every 10 mile per, per hour increment not being that very bold so having the digital readout there in front of you is very helpful. I am on what we like to call here in East Texas a farm to market road because let's face it these vehicles, these 2500s, they're everywhere <laughs> because these are great farm trucks. They are more than capable on the farm or more than capable on the highway pulling a big camper or horse trailer or whatever you need back behind you. And the ride I mentioned earlier could benefit from some weight back there in that six foot bed, but <laughs> it does not shake you and beat you up. The, trucks have come a very long way even in my 35 years of life it's impressive how smooth this thing rides down the road and then couple the over 3,000 pounds of payload and 18,000 pounds of towing capacity all that rolled into a very nice and neat package in this the only noise I really hear going over bumps are things that I brought with me. My child seat back in the back seat, which if you want to see what my family thinks of this vehicle, we will be uploading that video a little bit later this week. So be sure to subscribe for that. Otherwise, while yes, it is a big truck that I definitely feel a commanding view over everything else around me, it doesn't feel like imposingly wide, even on this 
the farm to market road with no shoulder on the side. I, I feel like I'm in a big vehicle, but I'm not afraid that I'm gonna drift into oncoming traffic or take out a tree on the side of the road. It's big, but roads in Texas are made for vehicles just like this. The power delivery is very smooth, linear, and predictable. No surprises there. Like I said, the Allison transmission is never hunting for the right gear. All told, it is a very good package all the way around. Makes me want this one just a little bit longer than in the short time I've got with it this afternoon. I will say a huge thank you to our friends at Hall Buick GMC here in East Texas. If you are in Tyler or the East Texas area and are looking for a rig like this to put to work for your family, go see Ray Sanchez and the group there. Tell them GT Garage Talk sent you. Going back to the visibility in this, these mirrors are massive and allow you to see everything around you. The upper part is your standard rear view mirror and that is power adjustable and it's large enough that I can see everything I need and more in it. The lower section allows me to see my rear tires and keep an eye on those, which is really good if you're long haul uh, trailering something over a long distance. Very good there. These big windows and this <laughs> very high ride height mean I can see absolutely everything around me. And while yes, higher trams do have GM's rear view camera mirror system, the view out of this camera, or rear view mirror is more than adequate for my use here. And if I am backing up, I can use the cameras built into the tailgate and everything back there. All told, this would be a very good workhorse for you if that is what you are looking for. As far as a family vehicle, uh, because this is a heavy duty vehicle, it is not rated by the EPA for fuel economy. But I can tell you just from driving it around town uh, what we've got here on the uh, driver information system as I scroll through. Uh, so over the last 25 miles, which I have not had for all 25 of those miles, I told you, it's a short test today, but driving it around the city, it's getting 11.8 mpg, and diesel fuel is over $4 a gallon as I record this, so you do the math there. You're buying this for its towing and hauling capabilities, you're not buying this for fuel economy. And in my short time with it, I really can't give you anything better than that 11.8. But I can tell you at a $9,000 premium, that diesel engine is the one you want if you plan on doing any sort of towing. Final thoughts here in the 2022 GMC Sierra 2500 HD. It's good. I like it a lot. It doesn't make a lot of sense for my city dwelling self and family of three, but being a full size pickup, there is more than enough room in the back seat for three actual adults to ride comfortably. This one does have a center console, but you can get three wide seating up front as well, which is also a very nice touch to be able to get six people in a rig of this size. Uh, the diesel aspect of it, again, paired with the Allison transmission, it's a very good setup, has not left me wanting here around town. Again, sorry, I, I can't tow with this one today. Just trust me, it's good. The numbers, the spec sheet are good. And as I mentioned, it, the ride could benefit from a little weight back there, but that's what this is built for. Really, I, I'm struggling with something to find wrong with this one. Like I said, the 1500s are getting an updated interior for the 22 model year. So it'll be interest to see, interesting to see if and when uh, that trickles down or up to the heavy duty models here. 
if you really like GM pickups, you're really gonna like this one. Oh, I screwed all of that up.